quadratic inequalities. This is the graph of y equals x plus 2 times x minus 3, a quadratic equation. There are two roots, x equals minus 2 and x equals 3, from each of these. The roots correspond to points on the curve where the y-coordinate is 0. So the curve crosses through the x-axis here when y is 0 and when y is 0 here. So when y is equal to 0 you've got this x plus 2 times x minus 3 that's all equal to 0. So then from here you've got x plus 2 equals 0 so x equals minus 2 this root and from uh, the factor here you've got x minus 3 equals 0 so x is equal to 3 this root here when we apply this to quadratic inequalities you'll see that we don't need the y-axis for anything so I'm not using it here now this 0 here I can put onto the other side so that's not changed the equation, it's still the same. And to make the equation into an inequality, I've removed the equals and I've put less than or equal there. So I'm now looking for the portion of the curve which is on the line or below it. That's what the less than or equal to zero is stating. It's saying when the y values are less than or equal to zero. The portion of the curve where the y coordinates are less than or equal to zero, well it's this portion here. That's a single continuous region for x values starting from and including minus two and ending at three and including the three. So you've got this. So that's the solution to this inequality. I'm going to modify this slightly. Instead of less than or equal to zero, how would the solution here change if that just said less than zero without the equals to part in there? So if I had this, now what this is saying is that we're looking for the portion of the curve which is below the line so where the y values are less than zero, so they're negative. So it's this portion here, in between the minus two and the three, but not including the minus two and the three. So now the solution is this. That x is greater than minus two, and x is less than three. For values of x in this range, the curve is below the x-axis, it's below the line. OK, I've changed the inequality again. This time it says greater than or equal to zero. So I'm looking for the portion of the curve here where the y values are equal to zero or they're greater than zero, so they're positive. So the y values will be positive or equal to zero starting from here and going to the left and starting from here and going to the right. These are two separate regions. So the values of x in this region and this region are written like this. Two separate inequalities for two separate regions. And again, how would this change if this just read greater than zero? All that you do here is you just make a slight modification there. So now x is less than minus 2 and greater than 3. So the minus 2 and the 3 are not a part of the solution now. So what you'll have noticed is that in all of these solutions we've used the minus 2 and the 3. So when you solve inequalities you should follow the following step. So let's say we're solving this inequality. Step 1, solve this 
as an equation. So I factorize this like this, and if you can't factorize, you can use the quadratic formula to work out um, uh, solutions. So I factorized, and I'm solving this as an equation. So I've replaced the inequality there with equals. And when you solve this, these values here, they are specifically called critical values when we look at inequalities. If it was just the equation that we were solving and doing nothing else, you would call these roots or solutions to the equation. But in this context of inequalities, they're called critical values. Step two, do a sketch. And you'll know from the coefficient of x squared whether you're going to do a u-shaped curve or an n-shaped curve. There's no need to draw in the y-axis. Make sure you've marked your critical values. And this is just a number line, so make sure you've got the values in the right order. So for instance, if you put 1 here and you put minus 2 there, that wouldn't make sense on the number line. And then step 3, just solve the inequality. So go back to what you were trying to solve. We're saying everything is greater than zero, so we're looking for the region, or the portion of the curve, that's above the x-axis. And looking at our sketch here, we're looking for this region, and that region corresponds to values of x which are less than minus 2, there. And we're looking at this region here, and this region corresponds to values of x which are more than or greater than 1. OK, so let's say I'm trying to solve this uh, quadratic inequality. It's already factorized, so um, uh, it makes it easier. So this, uh, the first step was to solve this as an equation. So x plus 1 times 5 minus x is equal to 0. So from this factor, x plus 1 equals 0, x equals minus 1. And from this one, 5 minus x equals 0, so x is equal to 5. So I can do a little sketch now. The x times the x, the minus x, will give you minus x squared, so that's an n-shaped curve. And the critical values are 1 and 5. That's a number line, so 1 goes here, and 5 on the right. And now we're going to solve the inequality. Less than or equal to zero means the region that's on the line and below, so here and here. And those two regions correspond to values of x. Less than or equal to one. And values of x greater than or equal to five, like this. Okay, I'm going to modify the problem slightly now. So, let's say that the inequality here said x is greater than 0. Well, all of this will still be the same. When you get to this final step here, when you're trying to solve the inequality, you think I need the region on that curve, the portion which is above the line. So above the line is this single continuous region. So the final answer should be like this. That portion of the curve corresponds to values of x which are greater than 1 and less than 5. I'm not including the 1 and I'm not including the 5. So to do this would be wrong you don't have that equal sign here, so you shouldn't have it in your solution either. OK, moving on. This problem is good at demonstrating problems where you're not given inequalities to solve straight away. But you have to come up with an inequality yourself 
and then solve it. So for what values of k does this quadratic equation have two distinct roots? So the number of roots is related to the discriminant. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And to have two distinct roots, we know that b squared minus 4ac should be greater than 0. It should have a positive value. Okay, so substituting the values of uh, b, a, and c into the discriminant, we've got this. So the k represents a. b is the coefficient of x. And c is the constant. Okay, so we've got this. Now we have to solve this inequality. Just multiplying the brackets out. Writing this as an equation. And then factorising. These are our critical values. And this inequality here that we're solving, it's not in terms of x. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the letter there is. The coefficient of the squared term is positive, so it's a U-shaped curve, and these critical values are 0, that's here, and 20 over 9 is here. Now what region are we interested in? It says greater than 0, so I'm looking for the region that's above the line, so the portion of the curve that's above the line, and that corresponds to values of k, not x, the values of k, which are less than 0, and values of k, which are greater than 20 over 9. So we've got this.